Hi, it's Monica. In today's video, I want to talk about some books that I don't really mention much here on booktube. So where this idea first came from is I noticed when making my booktube videos that I have not mentioned some of my favorites on here before. So I thought it would be a good idea to make a video like this and just talk about some of my other older favorite books that I don't talk about often on here. Before we get onto the list, give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below to not miss any future uploads if you do want to see more bookish video content from me. So let's just get right into it. The first book series I'm going to be mentioning is the Witchland series and I have the first book here, Truth Witch by Susan Denard. This one is a YA fantasy series and I think there will be five books in the series and the last one we'll be really seeing in the beginning of 2023. I really enjoy this book series because of its magical system. So the characters, they have their different type of witcheries that beings that have magical powers and their magical powers are categorized as witcheries. And within these witcheries, you could control the elements and then you have your special rare type of witcheries. We're following two witches in this book and they have a really strong friendship and they basically see each other as sisters. First, we have Safia, who's, I think, on the cover. She is known as a truth witch, so she is able to tell truth from lies, and her powers can lead to her being used as a really powerful political tool, and many kingdoms are really coveting that power and they want her. So Safia, she lies low and she hides her ability to avoid detection. Then we have Izut, who is Safia's best friend, who also has a witchery, but she doesn't quite fully understand it yet since it hasn't been developed. We're following Safia and Izut, who are on the run because they always manage to get themselves in trouble and they're being hunted by someone known as a blood witch. And a blood witch is a very powerful type of witch and he's hunting them down and he won't stop until he has captured them. Along the way, we also meet Prince Merrick who reluctantly helps them, but it won't be really easy to escape this blood witch. So the standout points in the series are first the magical balance and consequences to if you use magic. Once you reach your magical limit, you will essentially get really sick and in some cases you may die. I do really like how there are limitations to using magic in this world. And secondly, I do really enjoy the political intrigue that we get and the kind of hints of impending war. I love both of these elements and they bring a lot of tension and suspense to the story. Third, I really like how there's hints and depth of romance throughout book one and we do see that build up of romance throughout the other books. And I really do enjoy how each book focuses on a specific character, how you can see in this one says Truth Witch as its title and we get to see more of a focus on their character development and learning more about their backstory. So each book does feature a certain character but then we do still have our other cast members as well. I have yet to read book number four which is Thread Witch but i planning to reread the first three books before getting into that one. I do really recommend this fantasy series if you're looking for something fast-paced and really easy to get into. This next fantasy series is a really good one for if you're transitioning from YA to adult fantasy. And I'm talking about the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. His writing is really easy to read and his complex magical worlds and systems aren't as complex as they may seem once you get into the book. The basis of the magical system in this book is that the characters can ingest different elements or metals that allow them to burn these elements in them to grant them superhuman abilities that are temporary. So Mistborn is centered around a street urchin, Vin. And Vin discovers that she has the ability to use elemency, so that is what the magic is called in this world, and she is quite a powerful one at that. And she learns that she can become and learn under the tutelage of someone named Kelsier. Kelsier is the best of the best in the criminal underworld and he enrolls Vin to be a part of a huge heist that he's going to be conducting. I really really love the character Vin. She's headstrong, she's willing to learn and also willing to fight and Kelsier is also a character that I love as well. He's a very charismatic leader, he's like the comedic relief at times but he's also a badass fighter, he's selfless and he also wants to topple the enemy of this book who is the Lord Ruler and this guy is the main antagonist of this book and he's considered as a god in this world 
and he basically rules over this entire empire. The Lord Ruler rules with fear and he has enslaved these people known as Ska who then work with the nobility. For over a thousand years, the Lord Ruler has been in power and Kelsier with Vin and their crew are looking to topple the Lord Ruler and free all the Ska and basically dismantle this empire that had been built over a thousand years. This world is super dark and it does deal with issues such as slavery, unknown magical forces, and war. But despite the darker themes, it is really nicely balanced with Finn's introduction to the world of the nobility and her learning about that side of the world that she has never really known of. It's really her coming of age story for Vin and it's also nice to see the characters really holding on to that hope and in turn giving the readers hope that they can defeat the Lord Ruler once and for all. I absolutely love this trilogy and if you really want to commit to characters that you love, laugh, and cry over, I really recommend the Mistborn trilogy. And I think I will be um, reading the other trilogy that's after the original one, I think it's like the Alloy of Law or something, but I do want to continue on with this world. And next up we have another fantasy series, and this one is another YA fantasy series known as the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. So with this series, I read it quite a while ago, but I remember the addictive quality of the writing in the world. You just get sucked in, and I think I read all six books in this series within a couple of weeks. So this one's set at a boarding school, but we have supernatural creatures, which are vampires. We're following Lissa, who is a mortal vampire, and she's also a Morai princess, and she also has rare earth magic. And because of Lissa's high position in the school, she needs a bodyguard, and her bodyguard is her best friend Rose, who is a half-human, half-vampire. Both of their lives are dangerous ones to live, and there is the constant threat of the true immortal vampires, the Strigoi, that are constantly going after Lissa. So it does make up for really good intense action scenes and tension throughout the series. And within a boarding school setting, you always have that fun school drama and gossip as well as we have romance and mysteries that need to be solved. I really love Rose as the main character. She's funny, she's a badass fighter, and she holds her own a lot of the time. And Rose is the one who is also participating in a forbidden romance in this novel, which is also part of the addictive quality I would say to this series is that romance with the tension and building up throughout all of the books. I also really appreciate the strong female friendship that we have in this book between Rose and Lissa and they go through many ups and downs but their friendship persists. I do feel like I really need to revisit this book series because there is the TV show releasing in September I believe and I am quite curious about how that adaptation will work out. I really really highly recommend Vampire Academy if you want something that's really highly addictive and you will read each book in, in one sitting so go pick this one up if you're interested. My next book series is what I consider one of my all-time favorite book series and that would be the Shade of Magic trilogy by V. E. Schwab. And I have the first book here which is known as A Darker Shade of Magic. So this series is what made me a huge fan of V. E. Schwab's writing. This world has intense politics, magic, and really complex characters and it is an urban fantasy set across parallel Londons. There are different Londons known as the Red, Grey, White, and Black Londons. And all these Londons are like on top of each other so they're like parallel universes. And we have like a character like this one on the cover that can jump between these Londons and they are known as the Antari. So raised in Red London with magic, Cal is one of these Antari and he's an ambassador to travel to the White and Grey Londons. The Grey London is like our earthly London that we know, and then White London is another type of magical London. So Cal takes advantage of his position as ambassador to become a smuggler because of different parallel universes. People are curious about items from different universes, so he makes good profit out of that. However, one exchange, Cal meets someone named Lila Bard, and he manages to take her along with him to jump into another world, which is forbidden. And 
bunch of things take a turn from there. Some things I really love about this book series are the morally great villains and specifically Holland and we also have multi-layered and tough characters you love and the addictive writing quality and style that we have. This is also another book series that I really read through all the books in a breakneck speed. I really need to revisit them and reread this series. So my next book is actually a fantasy standalone which is quite rare for me to read and I really need to pick up more standalones and it's Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. So this book is one of the standout books that I read in 2019 and I recently found out like a few days ago that there is going to be a sequel coming out for Sorcery of Thorns in January 2023 and it's called Mysteries of Thorn Manor. I'm really excited to find out that there is a sequel so Another book I need to reread. Sorcery of Thorns is a really fun fantasy book with its main magical element being these huge magical libraries that have grimoires that are alive. Our protagonist is Elizabeth Scrivener who is a warden of one of these great libraries. She discovers that sorcerers who are magicians who get their powers from demons are planning and plotting to invade the libraries. Then Elizabeth meets a sorcerer Nathaniel but there is something different about this one sorcerer, but she remains suspicious of him when there's a murder. I really really love the elements of being in a library and how the books are alive in this book, and they also have emotions. And I really enjoy how this standalone does zero in and focuses on that one magical concept, which is not something that you see often, since I think with fantasy books you do see mainly fantasy series that is so in-depth and rich, which I love, but sometimes you do need something that's a little bit more centered on something. The characters are also what drive the plot forward and their actions are not just willy-nilly but they are motivated and that really makes you want them to succeed in solving this mystery in this book. There are also hints of political intrigue in this book and maneuvering around set laws which is something I do enjoy. So overall I really really love this book and it is another book that I mentioned I need to reread and I'm really excited for the sequel that's coming out. So next we have a dystopian book and this is the Ark of the Psy series by Neil Shusterman. So this series, I absolutely love it. I love this author. He creates the most realistic possible dystopian worlds could happen to us. In Scythe, the world is essentially perfect. There's no hunger, there's no war, there's no disease, and there's even no death. So humans are in the term of the word immortal. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows, there are scythes. They are the only people who can actually end life and they're commanded to do so in order to maintain population numbers. The main characters that we're following are Citra and Rowan who are chosen to be scythes apprentices and they both don't want to be apprentices but they have to go through with learning the art of killing people because if they don't they will be killed themselves. And reading along this series you do learn about more twisted things that are happening in this world and how things are not really as perfect as they seem. So this one is very engrossing with its politics, different factions in the world fighting for power, and how death itself is not seen as something scary since they basically conquered death in this world. With all those elements, I do really highly recommend if you want a dystopian sci-fi read. And to end this video off, I'm going to be including Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. So this is a dark adult fantasy about vampires. This book starts off when there is a 27 year long war with vampires waging that war against humans and the vampires are winning. However, there is some hope for humanity. There is a holy brotherhood who produces silver saints who are specially trained fighters to kill vampires and hunt them down. But now we're following Gabriel de Lyon who is the last known silver saint alive. Similar to the Name of the Wind format of a character telling his story, Gabriel is forced to tell his story to a historian and we learn about his early life and what has happened to the point of where he is now telling that story to the historian while in prison. I really enjoyed learning about the lore of this world and how Day's death happened which is where the sun was completely blocked over by something and for that 27 years that the vampires waged war against the humans, 
there is no more sun it's completely night all the time 24 7. the vampires of course are the standout point in this book for me since i do love vampires and learning about the lore behind them in the series was really fun one of the big factors in this book is religion and religion does play a large role in the plot within the character stories and settings themselves which does touch on how faith and belief can influence and dictate your decisions and that's explored throughout this book moving on we have our protagonist gabriel he is a very interesting character to read about his life has had several defining moments and he has had to overcome those moments or be labeled as a monster. Gabriel is a great warrior. He has epic romances and he treks across the kingdoms. And all of those elements really did make for an intense and thrilling fantasy read. I do have to say that Emperor of the Vampire is not a book for everyone. It does has similar writing style to the Nevernight trilogy and really intense politics and complex characters and background. But overall, it was a really entertaining, violent, and bloody read. Those were all the books I wanted to mention today. And if you're interested in any of them, I would recommend you pick them up. And comment down below if you have read of any of these series before. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and give me a big thumbs up. And also ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I will see you all soon.